Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. So suppose that the little f is a continuous function on the closed interval a, b, then the big F of x, which is the antiderivative of the little f, we're defining that as the net area under this curve right here from a to some x. And we're assuming that this function is also continuous on the closed interval a, b, and differentiable on the open interval a, b, then its derivative is the little f of x. Well, what all of that really means is that if big F is the antiderivative of the little f, then if you take its derivative, which is right here, and we're defining that as this integral right here, so you're taking derivative on both sides, and that is simply equal to the little f of x. So this is a very powerful theorem that connects differentiation and integration. Now, let me show you how to use this using a few examples. Here is our first example. Let's say you want to find the derivative of this function, which is expressed as the integral from zero to x of the function square root of one plus t squared dt. So if you differentiate uh, this function on the left side, you get your dy dx, on the right side, we get the derivative, I'm going to show more steps, derivative of the integral from zero to x of this function, one plus t squared dt. So by using the theorem above, the right-hand side will simply be the square root of one plus. So where you see t, you'll replace it with this function, which is the upper limit of the integration. So I replaced it that, I have simply t squared that is our derivative of this function, which we're calling the little f of x. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another example. Let's take a look at this one. Again, we have the function y expressed as a integral from one to x of one over t dt, assuming x is positive. We want to take the derivative of this function. So on the left-hand side, you have dy dx. On the right-hand side, we're going to take the derivative of the integral from one to x of one over t dt. So on the right hand side, applying the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have one over x, that is the function. And of course, this is our little f of x. So let's go ahead and try another one. Here is our, our last example. We want to find dy dx of this function. So same instruction as before, find the derivative of this function. So we have the derivative is equal to, so here I'm going to um, rewrite this a little bit since this function is not just, so right here, it's not just X. That means you have to apply chain rule when you take the derivative. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is one over the square root of one minus. So we're replacing T with the function at the upper limit of integration, this would be sine x squared. Now, because it's not just x, we have to use chain rule and multiply by the derivative of that function. That will be cosine of x. So just to write this in a simplified form, this is cosine of x over the square root of one minus sine squared of x dy dx. So that is our derivative, which is the little f of x. Now you can leave it right here, but uh, you can also simplify this answer a little bit more by using the identities we know from before. So recall that um, sine squared theta, or let's use x in this case, plus cosine squared x equals one. So if you switch things around, so for cosine square x, you get one minus sine square x. So I can replace that in here and simplify this a little bit more. So this is going to turn out to be simplified version as cosine of x over the square root of one minus sine square, that's cosine squared of x. And then here the square root and a square, we can cancel them out. So you have cosine x over cosine x, and that is equal to one. 